have a seat in the swastika asana. So, cross the legs and the center shin bones, feet under the knees. Take a moment, make a fist with each hand, place that by beside your outer hips and press down. As you press down and the buttock covers then off your blankets, surrender the inner groins, the frontal groins, the outer groins so that the hips have a sense of descending, releasing. As you lift across the chest, observe how the frontal hip bones rise slightly and then very slowly, gently give weight again to the buttock bones. Turn the upper arm bones out and release the shoulders away from the ears. And bring the palms together. We'll start with the sound of Om and continue with the invocation. Yogena chitasya padena vacha Malam shari rasya chavai chapina Loka kerutam pravaram inam Patan jalimran jaliram tusmi Abahu Purusha Dharam Shankat Chakra Siddharinam Sahasara Shirasam Shwetam Ranamami Patanjalim Hari Place the head down towards the heart center and surrender there completely. Release the hands with the palms up. Bring the head up with closed eyes. And gently then open the eyes. All right, everyone. So we're gonna start uh, standing this morning in Tadasan. So come on up, set the blankets aside for now. Uh, but to begin Tadasan today, take your back to a wall and bring your feet to the wall too, back of your heels to the wall if that is at all possible. And that should be possible. So when you initially come to the wall, the back of the buttock, the shoulders, they'll touch. That's correct. Now bend the knees. That's a good deal. Feel how the upper region of the buttock touches the wall and imagine there's a sticky mat on your wall. And begin then to lift through the knees in order to straighten your legs. And the buttock then is drug down the wall towards the heels, allow for that. Encourage that. And the kneecaps then will lift as the legs straighten. So get that lift of the knees, not the knees back. The knees draw, pull up. Uh, uh, you could even consider them tightening that upper kneecap. Then spread the mounds of the foot from big toe to small toe and feel how the top of the thigh moves back towards the wall, but you work to maintain the buttock down. 
So when both of those things happen, there's a grip or a gathering in the outer gluteals towards the mid buttock or the tailbone so that then the tailbone can be in. As you maintain the legs, feel the upper arm bones, they turn out, but keep your side waist back, right? So don't let the waist surrender itself forward to create all those actions. Side waist back. Now just do that again, bend your knees, feel that slow, steady lengthening of the buttock as you lift through the knees. Find that grip above the kneecap at the lower quadricep as the knees pull up. Then spread the mounds of the foot and feel how top thigh goes back, back thigh, back groin, and broaden some. And then there's an effort to keep the buttock down, tailbone in. Now, oftentimes in a live class, at this point, I would have you with a partner and they would press these top thighs back because, you know, it's effortful to do both buttock down and thighs back. So imagine someone has their hands there helping you take those thighs back and bring the palms together. The legs have to work quite a lot. The outer leg firms to the midline. Now take your arms straight forward and hook your thumbs, fingers at shoulder height. Reach through the fingertips so that the upper shoulder blades broaden. And you can keep the side waist and the thigh bones back. Now we're gonna lift the arms about halfway up from where you are. Lift about halfway, pause, breathe, breathe into the side body. And now work to get that lift, not just in your side body, not just in the front body, but in your back waist. Feel how your back ribs rise away from the waist. Maintaining that, encouraging that more and more, Go on and take the arms all the way overhead. Buttock down, thighs back so the tailbone is in. Lengthen as the side waist also remains back. Take the arms forward and down. Notice how you have your thumbs hooked. Release, bend the knees and lift through the knees. So you recreate that work in the legs and the lower back. Then second side, other thumb on top, thighs back, sideways back, upper shoulder blades broaden. Now inhale, go halfway up and build that lift, not just in your side, but in your back. It should feel like all of the waist gets longer. Then continue with that length, extend through the outer armpits. Keep thighs back, heels down, buttock down. And then release back to center. So come onto your mat now and build your Tadasana there. Same work in the, in the legs. All those things have to happen just as much as they did when your back was against the wall. Palms face the body, shoulders away from the ears. Now bring the palms together for bottom guliasan, interlock the fingers, press the palms forward, broaden the upper shoulder blades. As your outer leg firms in, feel how that includes the outer ankle firming in. So the inner ankles draw up towards the mid thigh. Now inhale, and continue with that lift up. Now catch the back ribs also. And lift and lengthen upward for Baddha Nguliasin. Breathe. Observe as you lift how the frontal hip points rise. Exhale, take the arms forward and down. Change the crossing of your fingers. And again, as the buttock descends and the mid buttock tailbone moves in, observe the lift as a result. It's a lift that happens in your frontal hip bones so that the pelvis is more and more upright. 
And the side ribs, back ribs can lift evenly out of the waist. Then bring the arms down, Tadasana. Shoulders away from the ears. Don't turn your elbows that way. Turn your whole forearm to, pray, to face your body. Okay, then relax. Now, we're gonna go back to a wall again and we're gonna take Garudasan. So the way I'm gonna ask you to do that, I'm just gonna get the mat out of the way completely. You're gonna face the wall where you can just put your fingertips there is largely for balance. Watch for a second. You're gonna cross your right leg over the left leg and work to get those toes to cross if possible. If they don't cross, you can put the toes on the ground, but work to get that. Then while you face the wall, now watch the hips. This is my right leg on top. Because I crossed it, it makes the right knee kind of go over there to my left. I kind of, well, I don't kind of, I move my right knee to the right and I bring weight into the left heel bone. And it gets that descent here again of the buttock so that then when I broaden my standing left mount of my foot, there's again a lift that comes from the pelvic floor, shoulders back, and I breathe. You could, I'll say, bend a little deeper while you're there and catch that lift. So again, it's a feeling that the frontal hip bones rise. We'll be there a little bit, then your right leg's on top, right arm's gonna go on the bottom. If the balance is available, you do this. If it's not, you just keep your hands here, it's fine. Then we'll come up and we'll change sides, okay? So face your wall. Arms should be bent a little so the shoulders roll back, catch Tadasana. Then bring right leg over the left, cross way up at the top groin to work to get that hook of your toes. And then right knee will go to the left in order to help you get that hook of your toes. Lean forward, really try and get that. That's it, really try and get that. If it does not come, it's okay. You can always lean down and try and help with your hand even, that's okay too. Now, once you've got that look forward, feel how your outer right knee presses into your outer left knee. So the outer right groin hip draws back, making a sense of uh, creating the, 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 the way that your pelvis faces the wall, right? Now, bring weight into your left, heel bone and descend the buttock. Spread the mound of your left foot from big toe to small toe on the ground and lift through the side ribs. Now you can walk your fingers up the wall a little bit to help with that lift of the back ribs. But if you feel you have balance, your right arm goes under your left arm Palms come together and you pull the arms up. And that's not required, get that right hip back. That is required, that must come first and the chest lifts. Okay, and then release to center. Change sides, cross way up at the top left thigh and hook the foot. Now look forward, shoulders away from your ears. Okay, get your elbows down so the arms aren't lifted or not. Your hands should be at about shoulder height. Yeah, now bend your standing right leg and bring weight into your right heel bone. Bring weight into the right heel bone and feel how then the buttock descends. Now spread the mound of the right foot from big toe to small toe and look to gain that lift of the base of the pelvic floor. Bend the elbows, have your fingertips on the wall. Don't push the wall away. Fingertips, it's just for balance. Yes, now as the buttock descends and you get that lift from behind the abdomen, observe in your own body how the frontal hip bones rise. Breathe into the side body now. As you kind of inch your fingertips up the wall, get the lift of your back ribs also. Keep the shoulders soft. If they grip, then it's too much and you walk your hands down a little bit. Otherwise, the, the completion of the pose is left arm under the right arm, palms come together, 
and the arms pull up. So the outer left knee hits the outer right knee and the outer right elbow hits your inner left arm to help hug the midline. Then release and come on out. Tadasana, just face your wall, be in Tadasana. Look forward at that blank wall. Look forward at that blank wall. Lift through the legs and turn your palms, your inner wrist and your inner forearms to face the body. Don't look at your arms. Don't look at me. Look at that blank wall. And use your sense of proprioception to know where your body is better. Now, as the arms, forearms face you, Turn the upper arms out, but turn the forearms to face you. Elbows are bent. So that in time, the upper arms stay turning out and you lengthen through the fingertips in order to slowly, steadily straighten the arms. Keep those forearms facing you. And lengthen until the triceps hug indicating a straightness coming into the arms. Good, now exact same thing again. Fingertips on the wall, keep the shoulders out of the ears, and now cross your right leg over the left leg and hook the foot as much as possible. Look at that blank wall. Don't look at your feet, don't look at your legs, and please don't look at me. <sighs> now, Move the right knee into the outer left knee. So it's like you're trying to pull that outer right thigh bone back to center. Bend the left knee, crawl your right big toe down towards your inner left ankle. So bend, so bend. Yeah, and now with the weight in the left heel, broaden across the mound of the left foot and lengthen out of the side waist, both the sides and the back waist. You can crawl your fingertips up the wall there to create, create a deepening of that length in your back body. And if it works for you, if you have the balance, right arm under left arm, lift through the forearms so the elbows come to shoulder height. Descend the buttock or in a bend. Yeah, better. Good, and then release and come up. Change sides. Embody the legs. This is still a standing pose, right? So it has to power your legs working. So roll the left knee towards your right outer knee and shift weight into your right shin bone. There should be a sense that that right shin, I'm sorry, Bring weight into your right heel so that the right shin bone pulls up. Keep the bend. Now your left leg's on top. So if you take the arms, the left arm is on bottom and you ascend the forearms and press those forearms also towards the wall. Breathe. More and more, you're working to get the torso upright kneel. Put your fingertips on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't lean into the wall. Your chest and your nose should be equidistance. Bend the knees to the buttock descend. All right, everyone. Good. Release and come on up. Tadasana. So just uh, be in Tadasana. You can stay there at the wall. Because it's kind of good to have your eyes trained to look into nothing. Shoulders away from the ears, tailbone in. Now, we're taking Riksasana in that same way, tree pose. So your fingertips should touch the wall. You don't need to see, you all know tree pose. So keep your left fingertips on the wall, hook your right ankle with your right hand and place the heel of the right foot way up on top of the left leg. So it should come all the way into the left inner groin if possible. The heel presses the leg. 
Then once you get that foot there and it's stable, put both fingertips back on the wall, look straight at that blank wall. And just a little bit, I want you to bend your left leg. Now descend both buttocks down, particularly the right buttock flush. That right buttock flush should feel like it rolls beneath you and towards your heel and towards the wall. So descend deeply there, feel. It'll even give your right thigh a sense of turning out more. Now, keeping the buttock descending, just like Tadasan, begin to lift your left knee so the upper kneecap tightens. Keep the buttock, especially the right buttock, descending. Spread the mound of your left foot so that top left thigh bone goes back. But now pin that outer right buttock down. So the outer right groin really has a sense of being pulled towards the ground. That left thigh back buttock down. Now crawl the hands up the wall and get the lift out of your back waist. The lift out of the side waist, that'll come. But I'm interested in the back waist now. Buttock down, back ribs up, look straight forward. Breathe. Then by balancing, right, from that left top thigh, left heel down, mounds of the foot spreading. You can lift the hands off the wall if you have the balance. Hook the thumbs and pull up. As much as you pull up, you press that left heel bone down. Elongate through the outer armpits and go up more. Elongate through the outer armpits. Take those arms straight up like I'm lifting you off the floor by holding your wrists. Last bit, come on, go up. Good, and then release the arms, release the leg. Great, second side. So left leg comes off. Just notice the difference when you bring the left leg up and put the heel at your right inner groin and your right leg stays straight. Fingertips on the wall. Just notice, is that different than where you ended up on the last round? My, my, hmm, my experience tells me that you'll sooner be in your lumbar spine here. And I wanna get you out of there and bring you into the pelvic floor. So listen, look at the wall, bend the right knee, descend both sides of the body, especially that left side from the waistband that should draw down. It should feel like the left buttock rolls beneath you towards your left heel and towards the wall. Then maintaining that, lift through the right kneecap. So the upper kneecap tightens left buttock beneath you. Spread the mounds of your right foot so that right thigh goes back, left buttock beneath you. So that again, you begin to experience both outer gluteals gathering towards the midline. Now walk the fingertips up the wall, get that lift out of the back waist especially, Hook the thumbs and lift up. Oh, okay. Lengthen and lift. Feel how the tailbone's in. Now lift up. Lift up, pull way up. But do so out of your back waist or not. Back waist, back ribs. Your back ribs are not lifting. Your back ribs are not lifting. Get them to go up. Front ribs back, back ribs up. And then go ahead and release all the way back down. Tadasana. We're gonna do that one more time, exactly like that. So right leg comes up first. Ooh, sorry. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. The heater clicked on. Okay, so right leg up. forward, bend that standing leg and rock the buttock. It's almost like you guys have all been in classes with me where we have put that traction rope around the top leg. It should feel like we have a rope or a strap there and I'm pulling that outer right hip down. Now bend your left knee and get that drop of the leg, drop of the hip. Now keep that descent, lift through your left kneecap. Bear weight in the left heel, so the top left thigh 
right? Moves back and thread the mound of the left foot. So the whole left foot presses equally. Now, as you walk the hands up the wall a little bit, feel it'll give you more uh, ability to control that left buttock so that the front two hip bones have a sense of rising. Lengthen, and then from there, go on and hook your thumbs and pull up more. Back ribs out of the waist. Okay, good, and change sides. Left leg up. Bend the right knee, descend both sides of the buttock. Roll that left buttock beneath you and towards the heel and then towards the wall. You almost have to sneak the right leg to straight so it doesn't disturb the descent of that left buttock. Right thigh back, spread the mounds of the foot. Now start to crawl your hands up and feel it'll give you a little more um, accessibility into the lift of the frontal hip bones and into the lift of the back ribs. So up, go up, and when you're ready, put the thumbs and go up more. Lengthen. And come back to Tadasana and just face normal. Come back to your screen, face normal, feet together. Bend the elbows a little to the side so you can turn the palms and forearms to face you. And then descend the arms so that they straighten. Keeping the arms facing you. Namaskar Asana. Urdhva Namaskar Asana. Keep those palms together, lift and lengthen up. Now, here's the story. If it's too much on your neck and shoulders, hands or shoulders distance. If it's not, press the palms and lift because it will help you lift your back ribs. Lift up, now inhale, and with your exhale, Utkatasana, take your time. Keep those pinky fingers lifted, Utkatasana. Bend, 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 bend. Bear weight in the heels so the buttock descends. Have a sense that your toes, the mounds of the foot spread so the kneecaps lift up. Keep the tailbone in so there's a sense of lift in the frontal hip points as you pull up. Now inhale, lift with the arms and straighten the legs. Namaskar asana. Tadasan. Namaskar asana. Inhale, Ordva Hastasana. Now, pinky fingers should remain connected to the ceiling. Take a breath and with your exhale, begin to bend the knees, buttock flesh descending, 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 bend. Bend to the greatest ability, heels down, small fingers up, spread the mounds of the foot and feel how that gives a lift to the shin bones and a lift in the pelvic floor. So the tailbone is in and you also gain lift in the frontal spine from behind the pubic plate. Breathe through the nose. Inhale, lift through the arms, come to standing. And Namaskarasana and Tadasana. All right, Utita Trikonasan. Inhale, jump into Utita Hasta Parasan. Arms wide now. To begin, you know, the toes point forward, of course. Bend your knees just a tad and roll the knees out. Hit the knees out towards the sides and descend the buttock so that as you lift through the kneecaps, the buttock remains descended. Turn the legs to the right. Let's all go to the other side, I'll mirror you. Keep that left body connected to the left heel and Utita Trikonasan. So hold above the right ankle, use a brick if you need it. 
But now as you look forward again, descend the buttock towards that left heel and take the left thigh back. Right side waist, lengthening. Press the left heel, turn the chest towards the right. Inhale, lift from the right arm, come up, turn the feet forward, other side. So left heel bone down, buttock descending. Lengthen out over that left leg, hold above the ankle if possible, or use a brick. Now, press the right heel, descend the right buttock all the way out of the back waist. Maintain that length on the left side ribs. Turn the chest to the left. Inhale, lift and come up, turn forward. Exhale, jump, Tadasana. Now, bring the narrow edge of your mat to a wall. Once you're there, step your legs apart, put your left outer foot at the wall. We're doing triangle pose once again. Now I'm going to my right. I'm not mirroring you in this case. So turn your left foot in a little. So it's that outer rim of the heel that touches the wall. Turn the right leg out. So you align front heel with the back arch, of course. And now press that back heel down and back towards the wall. So when you look forward, this is the midline of my right thigh, right? It should feel like the flesh from the midline to the outer thigh moves back. This part flows back. Of course, mound to the right, big toe down. Now inhale, and with your exhale, bring yourself into the pose. And what happens when we come into the pose is we tend to lose that outer thigh flesh moving back. So press that left heel bone down and back again to feel the flow from the center thigh to that outer thigh flesh to move back. Then you lengthen the left side ribs and turn the chest to the right. Now bring the right hand to the right waist. Feel all that length that hopefully you're creating there on the back uh, right waist. You're gonna look down. We're gonna take Ardha Chandrasana. To get there, bend the right knee, hand to the ground. Step the back foot in, reach the right hand forward and lengthen the buttock, especially the left buttock towards that left heel. Step on the right foot and lift the left leg. Now both buttocks towards that left heel. Press the mound of the left big toe away and feel how that center left thigh to the outer thigh rolls back. Lengthen the right side ribs and turn the chest to the left. If you want, that left arm can reach up. Keep that length in the low back, tailbone in. Now bend the right leg, set your left foot down again, try and find the wall again. Press the heel down and into the wall and use that energy to bring yourself upright. Turn the feet forward, heel toe, step or jump Tadasana. So good, now left foot against, uh, right foot against the wall. <clears throat> so I'm just turning my mat so I'm not completely turning my back to you. Right? <clears throat> so turn the right toes in a little bit so that outer heel presses, turn your left leg out, align heel to back arch. And then as you look forward, press that outer right heel back and down. From the center line of your right thigh, feel how that flesh of the outer thigh moves back. In my case, towards the rope wall. Okay. Then exhale, left hand down, right arm up, look forward and observe how that action of the outer thigh back is so easily lost here. So to recreate it, right heel presses back and down and that thigh moves back. 
and the low back there should get long, but the left side ribs will feel kind of crunched or rounded. So lengthen the left side ribs away from the left waist a bit and turn the chest to the right. Now bring the right hand onto the right waist. Observe all that length in the back body. You should also be able to observe how the right frontal hip point as a result of everything we've done moves slightly towards your chest. Now look down, bend the left leg. Step the right foot in and press the right heel down as you bring your left hand forward. Keep that length in your low back as you step onto that left leg and lift the right. So now press into the mound of the left big toe and press out through the mound of the right big toe and feel how you can gain again that outer thigh back. Lengthen the left side ribs and reach the right arm up and any amount the chest turns towards the right. Then bend the left leg, put your right foot down again, find your wall. Use that press of the heel back and down to help you and inhale, lift up. And that lift should almost feel like effortless. Now step the feet together again, Tadasana. Now, we're going to keep this really simple to begin. So I want you to put, um, da, 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 da. you can have bricks if you want. Let's say, we did this yesterday evening if you were in class. So you could have bricks on tall. And actually, that's kind of a nice transitionary, that word, <laughs> thing to have. <laughs> but we're going to do pars votanasana in this way. And that is, I'm going to point my right foot forward like any other time. But when I bring my left foot to the wall, you know, typically it's that outer left heel that touches the wall. Today, just watch, I'm going to bring my hands down on the upright bricks, but I'm going to look back at that back foot and try and turn the foot forward. So I'm trying to turn that foot as much forward as I can. Now, when that happens, the back of the heel hits the wall. Now, the part of the back heel that hits the wall is important. So, let's see if I can show this. The heel rim is right there at the very bottom part of your heel where it touches the ground. But the part of your heel that will touch the wall is about two fingers above that rim. There's a little spot there. When that part touches the wall, you press into the wall from there, okay? A lot of times I'll say from your front ankle, but let's be more specific today. It's that spot just above the rim of your heel. So come on, let's do that. Pars and step your right foot forward, left foot back, hands on the bricks, and look to turn both feet forward. Your inner foot will be like on the same line. So be on those upright bricks. The mound of your right big toe presses so the outer right hip firms in. But now we're gonna work to get out of the hip joint and more into the chronic lift of the pose. So press that back left heel back and feel the heel bone itself moves down. Relax the abdomen and feel how the back waistband descends the buttock down. Yes, that's it, Orna. Good job. It, for a lot of us, it feels like way too much, right? Because we're working, we're used to working in our hip joints. I'm asking you to work the prana. So the tailbone's in. Now, both outer hips should be firm. Lengthen your side ribs forward, not your waist. Your waist is kind of lifting back and up a little bit because of the work of your legs. Roll the side ribs forward, breathe. Feel how as you press that left heel back, the inner upper left knee moves back and the outer left calf has a sense of flowing forward. Now, just change feet, bring your left foot forward, bring your right foot back, align the foot. 
And by the way, press them out of your left big toe. But by the way, those of you who feel like these sorts of poses are difficult because of the, the maybe the tightness in the back of your legs, working in this way makes them much more doable. All right, so now press that right heel back and down. The inner upper right knee moves back. The outer right calf moves forward. Now draw the side ribs forward and broaden your collarbones. Breathe. Get both hands down evenly. That right hand should not be higher up than your left hand. That has to do with how you work with that back right leg. Roll the inner upper right leg back. Now change sides. Go back to right foot forward, left foot back. Create the same work. And you'll feel that dramatically the tailbone is in, the frontal hip points roll forward so the side ribs can lengthen. Now, flip the bricks in half, put your fingertips on them. Maintain the work of the back leg in particular and exhale, reach the palm of the hand down. Yes, your back will probably round. That's okay. Lengthen your side body forward, side ribs. Now get rid of the bricks, put your fingertips on the ground. Yes, your back will round. Press the left heel down more to get there. Exhale, see about taking the whole palm down as much as possible and roll your side ribs forward. That's it. Now get your bricks again, turn them on tall, change your feet. So notice it's not about yanking and pulling at the muscles. It's about lifting the prana, the energy of the body upward, all the way through the base of the pelvic floor. So now those bricks are on tall again, back heel, right heel, back and down. Now to the left big toe down, so it should feel like the pelvic floor sucks in and up. Side ribs forward. Now flip the blocks to medium, fingertips on, because that doesn't change much height. Work with the back leg and exhale, press the palms down. Get rid of the bricks, fingertips down. Work with that back leg more. Take a breath and exhale. Reach the palms down as much as you can. Roll the side ribs forward. Now step the back foot to the front foot. Inhale and come on up. Okay, you guys feel how we're getting that lift of the base from there? Yes, no, a little bit. Yeah, good, good, good. Now just watch. We're going to do a little bit of a dance. <laughs> it's sort of like that vinyasa work, which is fine work, but in my opinion is way overdone and taught incredibly too soon in most classes. Why? Because it's fun. Okay, well, that's great. But, you know, you have to benefit from the work. So what I mean by vinyasa work is linking poses together. But you have to do that with a lot of awareness and intelligence. So just watch, here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna face the wall, I'm gonna take my legs wide. I am not putting my chest all the way against the wall. It's like that shoulder distance thing that we already did, right? So you're gonna kind of go like this. I'm leaving a little room. I turn my legs and I remember how that felt to press the heel back and down. My left hand can just stay at the wall. It helps with that leg. This hand comes down. Okay, good. Oh, you see the difference? This is hanging in my joints. This is what I see so frequently. Watch. Chronic action. Now from there, do I have room? Just barely. Ardha Chandrasan. Look at the length in the low back. It's not that sort of thing, right? I gotta really work to build that length so the tailbone's in. Then I'm gonna step that left hand down the wall slowly. I'm not in a hurry. And then I've got to turn the pelvis. This outer right hip st stays in, inner upper left knee lifts, outer calf rolls down just like you did a moment ago and push into the mound of that left big toe. You see the tailbone's in, my chest 
I could lengthen more, but I've run into all. <laughs> then, Parsvottanasana, inhale. Then you come up and we change sides. Okay, so face your wall. Legs apart, turn your feet to the right for Trikonasana. Make sure you're not going to run into a wall like I did. And press that left heel down. Mound to the right, big toe down. The outer hips gather to the midline. Now, take the right hand down for Trikonasana. Left hand on the wall, press that left heel down. Feel how the flesh from the midline of your left thigh moves back. And in turn, Mound of the right big toe is down, outer right hip is in. It should feel like, oh, such nice space on the left lower back. Now, bend your right knee, step in with that left foot, Ardha Chandrasana. That's it. Roll both of the buttocks towards that left heel. That's it, good Jason. Press your left hand into the wall and press the mound of that left big toe away. And yeah, the weight is on the mound of your right big toe also. So the right side ribs lengthen. Breathe. Now, you're gonna just slowly step the left hand down the wall so you're balanced and reach it to the floor. The outer right hip stays in towards the midline, but now turn the pelvis to face the ground. That's it. So your inner upper left knee lifts to the ceiling. Your outer left thigh, uh, calf rolls to the ground. Press through the mound of the left big toe and suddenly you should feel like, wow, there's Parsvottanasana actions as the side rib pulls forward. <laughs> Good, now bend the right leg, take the left foot back and down and set up Parsvottanasana legs. Be so strong and stable in those legs so that the tailbone is in, the side ribs lengthen. But when you bring your hands to your waist, it should be quite effortless to lift to standing. Well done. Now turn the feet to neutral, step your feet together or just get ready for the other side. We're just doing that once on each side. Gotta get ready. Now we're going to the left. So right foot turns in, left leg turns out. Look at that blank wall. Press the right heel and feel the flesh of the outer right thigh go back. Exhale, bring the left hand down. Ah, three to nine. Lengthen the left side ribs. Now, Ardha Chandrasana, you can look down, step the right foot in, come on up. Both buttock into that right heel. Press the mound of the right big toe away as you press the wall with your right hand and feel that outer right thigh turns out. Now, slip your right hand down the wall so that first your chest turns to the ground, that's fair enough. But then roll that outer right hip towards the ground, left outer hip in. Inner upper right knee to the ceiling, outer right calf looks down. Now press the mound of the big toe away, side ribs forward, and feel those Parsvottanasana legs take hold again. Then bring the back foot down and be in Parsvottanasana. When you go to come up, if the legs are super strong, it should be quite effortless. Go on, inhale, lift. And then just be in Tadasana for a moment. Good, everybody. Um, okay, so now this is going to require a little bit of um, rearranging for me and for you. So um, I want us to be able to take Utita Hasta Padangustasana. I'll show you what it is, but it's gonna require, we can do it with chairs. I don't think it works all that great with chairs. It's not my favorite way to work. Since you're in your home, 
it's a little more likely that you'll have things like a sofa. I see Kim has a sofa right there or a countertop like Orna's countertop right there. If you don't have those things, you can use a chair and you'd use the backrest of the chair, but just watch and I'll show you what I mean. Hold on, I gotta move my trust. So, oh, here we go. Hold on. I've not moved the trestle this way before <laughs> since I moved my room around. But, oh, it's like my favorite prop. So, now it's like I have a countertop, kind of like Orna's countertop back there. Now, you know, it depends on what you have because whatever large piece of furniture you have, and by the way, like an armchair would work for this too. Uh, but then you have to determine, well, how's that gonna work with my height? So this is a little high for me. You know, again, it just depends on your height. My husband's much taller, probably not too high for him. So I'm just gonna put a brick there. Now, the cool thing is with a trestle or a countertop, it's wide, right? So the point is, let me just get rid of this so you can see a little better. The point is, it gives me something to put my hands on while my leg is up. So I'm gonna put my left foot on that brick. Look where it puts my, my top, my uh, surface here, right around my hip height. So that then I can bring the left leg up, heel on the on this trestle or a countertop, Hands are here, so it turns me forward, and I work on the standing actions of Tadasana in that left leg. So if you only have a chair, it's okay. Same deal, you might put your foot against the backrest of the chair. You could build the backrest of the chair up with a blanket. It just kind of depends on what's available. So, you know, if I was doing it in a classroom with everyone, I would do like that. The only different part of it is, is there's nothing in front of you. You have to just work with your mind's so eye. It works. So just, you know, use what you use. I would put the chair with the back facing the wall, maybe a little padding on top of it. But let's everybody stand on your left leg and bring your right leg up now. And I'll just give you a minute, you know, find what you need to find. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. That's good, Neil. Now, either your hands are on something or they're on your waist. Stand in your left leg. In other words, let's everybody do this. Bend your left knee a little bit and descend the buttock down, especially that right one. Then lift through your left kneecap and bring weight into the left heel bolt. So that top thigh goes back. Now, as that happens, press out through the mound of your right big toe. And especially this right frontal groin, outer groin, it should feel like, wow, that's got to go down. And you lift through your side ribs to broaden the collarbones. Thanks to how both legs are working, still the outer gluteal sperm to the midline tailbones in. Good, now just release that, bring that foot down and set up the other side. And I mean, essentially, you know, essentially it's triangle pose, but it's just giving us an opportunity to work with gravity in a little bit of a different way. And that, in my opinion, is really what brings understanding to the work. And, you know, when gravity's in a different place, you get different lifts. So once you're facing forward, bend the right knee a bit and descend the buttock down, particularly that left outer groin, descend. Now maintain that descent, lift through the right knee. It's almost like you have to sneak it to straight. Bear weight in your right heel so the right thigh goes back and broaden the mount to the right big toe, to baby toe. So the mound of the left big toe also presses away. 
And then it's like a dance. You still want that right thigh back. Right thigh back. So, hey, again, just like Trikonasana, think about your center right thigh. That flesh on the outer thigh goes back. Not just the inner thigh. Inner thigh, yes, it goes back too. There should be an evenness there. Then release to center. Go back to the first side for a moment. Same thing. Just rebuild that same work. Now to the right big toe away so that you build the lift from the base of the pelvic floor so that the frontal hip points have a sense of reaching up. Release back to center, change sides. and then release. There's more you can do there. I'm not going to do that today, but that's a good amount of things to work on in that vein with the hips and legs. If you're someone who has ongoing lower back pain, all those things are a good way to start with dealing with it. You'll notice it's also the shape of supta, padagrushtasana, which is kind of the first go-to with back pain. I've had a couple of emails talking about back pain. Um, okay, so now for one moment, you're gonna keep that chair or get a chair. We're gonna take Padangushtasana action. So Padangushtasana is here, but again, look at my hips. This is so common, but incorrect. It's that. So I want you to find that here. So you're just gonna bring your hands right onto the seat of the chair, feet under your hips, kind of squared off in that way. And, you know, it's just a function of the fact that we, we do bend in our joints. That's what they're for. But it's so easy to just do that and forget that there's chronic action. So bend the knees a little bit and descend the buttock towards the back of your heels. Relax the abdomen. Feel as though you're pressing your knees out. So it's like you're hitting the knees out into a stable something. And now slowly lift through the knees. So there's weight in your heel bones. You'll really feel that descent of the buttock. Now add into that, broaden the mounds of the foot from big toe to baby toe and feel, you'll get the lift of your inner ankles up. The outer hip will begin to firm. Now roll your side ribs forward, but feel that, wow, there's a lift from the base of the pelvic floor all the way to that space behind my chest. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that this part of the back, it's not that it's so much rounded, but it's lengthened. So there's not that dip in the back. There's a lift in the body. Now from there, keep the outer leg firm, inner leg lifting, and you begin to walk your hands down the front legs of the chair. The more you walk down, the more you have to gain that length and lift in your legs. You can put the head down and breathe. Outer legs in, outer ankles in, inner ankles up. Release and relax through the side body downward. And if you wanna go deeper, you can grab onto your big toes and bend to pull the side body down. So all of those stages are correct. Then inhale, come on up. Use your legs, inhale, come on up. Good. Okay, now I'm gonna move that trestle out of the way and we're gonna bring a chair to a wall. So what you need is a chair, your mat, 
and preferably a bolster at a wall. Go ahead and get those things and then I'll show you how we're going to set that up. There we go. Now, I think I'm going to turn so that you can see me from the side because I think that'll be a little more useful. Oh. Also get a blanket, please, because it will help your chair from tipping over. You'll see. So just take a blanket, fold it in half, and just put it between the backrest of the chair and the wall so it doesn't tilt back into the wall. And have that bolster right there. In front of the chair. You guys see me okay over there? Yeah? Okay, good. So just watch for a second, then we'll all do together. I've got that bolster on, on the mat just so it doesn't slide around. I'm bringing my body at bones right to the edge of the chair seat, and I put my feet in Baddha Konasana. Heels and my hands on the chair seat. Now just watch. I lift my hips so I kind of roll the flesh of the body beneath me so that it's the side ribs that lengthen, not so much the waist. The waist just does what it does. It actually has to divide in a certain way. And you'll get that sense of length, the sense of depth in the groins. Then what I'm gonna say is you'll bring your feet forward, bear weight on your hands to descend the buttock down again. Then the great thing is, is, oh, you have that chair there. So if you round back, it's going to say, don't do that. Hands on the side of the bolster. We'll be here a little bit. We'll be here a little bit. Then I'm going to say, press the palms forward, Parvatasan, and we're going to lengthen forward in that manner. If you don't look, let's do it. Right on the edge of the chair seat. Mm -hmm. Have the bolster touching the chair legs. So that it's not too far away. Mine was a little bit too far away. But now hands on the back of the chair, or the hands on the chair seat right behind your hips. Now, if when you get to this position, your knees gripe at you, right? The most important thing that you can do is lift your hips and roll the buttock flesh away from the chair and towards the back of the knees or forward. So get that lift, get that turn. And then lift the side ribs, your, your hips will kind of hover and then you can give them a little weight. But the idea is, is it gets this outer hip, outer groin, that's the key, down. And I don't know. Just work with that. So coordinate that. You should be able to kind of feel that in the hips. The knees should not feel stressed. Then from there, you slip your feet forward and use your arms to support you. You're going to come down. But you want to feel those outer groins descend first and foremost, faster than any other part of you. Descend the butt. Bring the hands on the outer edges of the bolster now so that those outer groins but it continues to go down first and foremost. Press the outer foot into the outer foot then take your hands to your front ankles and lengthen and lift through the side ribs. So now observe that big change or difference between the upper body and lower body. They're really lengthening away from one another. Bring the palms together, parvatasan palms forward, 
press the outer foot into the outer foot, broaden the upper shoulder blades, but push forward, lengthen forward as the side ribs move forward. Breathe, keep the outer groins descending, push the palms forward, 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 forward. You can look down. And then inhale, come up. Change the fingers, palms forward. Press the outer feet so you really feel this gathering in of the outer leg and hip and come on forward. And then inhale, come on up. Lift the outer knees. Sit yourself back up on that chair and move the bolster forward so it's under your feet. Whoops, forward and up so it truly is under your feet. But I bones on the um, seat of the chair. There we go. So you got to position that bolster. The reason I kept moving it is my heels were too far off the midline. You want it to be just far enough away so it's almost like you're pushing it away with your heels, but it to the heels, right? That way. Then spread the mounds of the foot and lift through your side ribs so that still those outer groins descend, frontal groins descend. It's the broadening in the mound of the foot that widens the back of the legs. Then reach the arms up, lift out of your side ribs. Keep the mound of the foot broadening, take a breath, and with your exhale now, reach forward. Reach forward. Outer groins down. The chair's there at the wall. It should not slip on you. When you can, you take your fingertips to the toe tips. Buttock to the heels, spread the mounds of the foot, and lift the side ribs away from the ground to broaden your chest. Breathe. Good, everyone. Broaden your collarbones, Orna. Lengthen your side ribs, broaden the collarbones. So do that work from below, not from above your collarbones. All right, so it's not your shoulders doing it. Now hold the outer foot and pull your side ribs forward so the shoulders move away from your ears. So you're working in the trunk of the body below your collarbones so that the shoulder blades come onto the back, arms straight. Relax the abdomen, any amount, bend the elbows and lengthen forward and look down. Then straighten the arms and inhale and come on up. Good, everyone. Okay, bodies feel all right? Great. Okay, we're going to take that a little bit deeper in a different way. So you're going to take your chair away from the wall. Just put it on your mat. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm not. Sit on your chair like this. These are malasana variations, and they're really, in my opinion, very doable variations that teach this outer groin down. So once your legs are around the backrest, and these can just be close, press the hands into the chair a little so that when your hips lift, you get this sense of release in these outer groins, frontal groins. So when you put weight in your hips again, it should feel like that goes down first. Hold the sides of the chair and lift through your side ribs to broaden the collarbones. That broadness comes from beneath your collarbones, not above. Trapezius has nothing to do with it. Don't kind of try and look forward. Then you can take your forearms around your legs and kind of hug your legs in. Still, outer groins are down. Relax the abdomen. It'll just kind of flow inward and upward. And breathe into the side ribs. Relax the frontal groins. Don't let your upper back stoop like that. Keep the chest lifted. Yeah. So there's a lift from beneath the collarbones. Then release that. 
that's pretty doable. So the deal is, the reason I don't want your upper back to stoop is because it puts pressure in this area. This area should be lengthened. That's why buttock is going down, but it doesn't happen from one direction. This has to go up to create that length. So that's why I'm saying that. Now watch, you're gonna stand on your chair, so please be careful and hold on. You see, I'm putting my heels kind of just beyond and I use the chair to descend these outer groins so that yeah, the knees can widen a little bit. Now watch, if I stoop my lower, uh, my upper back, it puts pressure here. So it's not about pushing this area. It's buttock down, but then, oh, I gotta lengthen. Then it starts to coordinate. That's where you start to pick up that prana. So we'll start like this. I may say, grab on, you know, you can always deepen it. But do you see my shoulders are away from my ears? That upper back's not there. This is incorrect. This is more correct. Do you understand what I mean by that? For the most part, we're just going to hold on. Okay. So come on. Get your feet on. All the bend your knees. The knees can separate a little bit. But now first and foremost, put your brain in these outer groins and descend them down. Feel the weight is in your heel bones, so the shin bones pull up. Do not stoop your chest forward. Do not get ahead of me. Hold the sides of the backrest and lift through your side ribs. So the collarbone broadens because of what happens beneath it. Mm -hmm. So your shin bones, can you see how my shin bones are pretty upright? You don't want them way forward like that. You want them upright. I'm getting off my chair because I need to see you more closely. Just be there for a moment. If you want to uh, reach the arms forward, as long as your shin bones are upright, you can do that. Kim, look straight forward, heels down, shin bones up. Up, yeah, it's gonna take your butt down. Up shin bones, yeah, more. Up shin bones, <laughs> yes. That's it, good. Now, Jason, take your feet together because you can there, right? It's not gonna give you as much as quickly, but you can there. Good, everybody, yes, good. So the tailbone is in, the shin bones are lifted. Good, Clifford, breathe. That's it, good or not. Now hold the back rest and stand up and come off there. Turn around, sit in the chair like a normal human being. Poor Masana, last little bit going forward, then we're gonna shift gears. So sit all the way back in your chair, take your feet a little wider than the front chair legs. It's that same, Thing, outer groins especially descend, so the side ribs lift. Bring your hands forward. Now the outer groins are down. That will make you want to roll into your outer foot. That's not incorrect, but we need to add something. Press the inner foot down, inner heel mount to the big toe, side ribs forward. Keep the outer groins down, walk the hands forward, lengthen your side ribs, breathe. Then look down and with your exhale, bring the hands back there towards that back bar of the chair. So when you reach back, whether you grab on or not, doesn't matter, but inner heel, inner foot down, lengthen your side ribs. It's not only round the back, it's round the back while maintaining with you. Good job. Then release and inhale, come up. Bring the buttock to the front of the seat of the chair, feet together. Hook your thumbs in the outer groins. Again, that area is going down. 
And you can feel now, oh, and then this side rib region lifts up. Now we're kind of coming out of the forward bend. So this is how we're going to do it. You're going to hook your left elbow beyond your right knee. And it's that Marichasana hand that I make there. Go on, do that. Lengthen your left side ribs, keeping the left hip down. Bring the right hand back and hold the back rest, and that elbow can bend a little. Stand into the heel bones. Deepen the abdomen by letting it relax and lengthen your left side ribs to turn. So this is a pose where you would be standing in your heels if you were doing the full pose. So think about how much the tailbone would need to be in. And then release back to center. So hook the thumbs in the outer groins again, lengthen and lift. And now exhale, right elbow hooks beyond your left knee. Build that Mari Chas in a hand. Stand in your heels, right outer groin down, but lengthen the right side ribs, turn. That left hand can hold the backrest to help you turn more and more and more and more. And then release back to center. You all know normal chair twist. So I'm sorry, I'm going to turn my back to you, but you're going to turn yourself so that your backrest is on your right side, right hip touches that corner of the backrest, heels down. Now, same thing, the outer groin still descend, heels are still down, lift through your arms. Exhale, turn to the right. Push with the right hand, pull with the left hand, but keep standing in the heel bone. So feel how that keeps those outer hips pinned. Elbows wide. Take back left ribs to the left elbow. And exhale, release. Go to the other side. Heels down, outer groins down, arms up. Exhale, turn, push with the left, pull with the right, but keep that right hip down. Move those thick back right ribs to your right elbow. Turn. Release back to center. Now we're going to the right again, but I'm changing it each time to make it more and more back bend oriented. Okay, so this is the one, those of you in class have done this with me. You bring the, this part of the chair right to your tailbone region. Your knees are on either side of this corner. So you're sitting a little bit kitty corner on the chair. Heels down, outer hips down. But now you hook this right hand and you pull with your left hand. So push with the right, pull with the left. Now lift and lengthen the frontal spine, turn and look over that right shoulder, breathe. Exhale back to center, go to the second side. Outer groins down, heels down, hook that left elbow, right hand across. Lift and turn. Look up and over that left shoulder, breathe. Release back to center. Now I'm just going to bring my chair a little away from my wall because I'm a little too close. Last bit. Again, I know those of you that are doing this with me live have done this before. You take the bottom tips to the shoulder blades just above the backrest and the hands come back. But now what comes next is you got to find the front legs of the chair. Heels are on. When I lift, I release with my hands. And the buttock flows to the back of the knees and the heels are down. So I really feel that tailbone in. Wow, now I can really lengthen my side ribs. Head and arms just rest back. Come on in. The legs are very, it's a very leg centric pose, but it helps to take the tailbone in and keep the low back long. Breathe. Good, and then release and come down for a moment. 
And be sure your feet are on the front legs of the chair. I can't tell if they are for everybody. Do it one more time, but you see where my feet are. My heels are on those front legs of the chair so they don't roll. Turn, lift the chest, then take a breath and exhale. You lift and the arms move. Last one. Lift through the shin bones, tailbone in. Open the frontal groin so that you get that lift from the base of the pelvic floor all the way up the frontal spine and into the chest. And then as you're ready, you can come on down. Oh. Okay, so here's how we're going to finish off class. You're going to take Shavasana, but we're going to take Shavasana in Vipreeta Karani. There's going to be a transition. Most of you are aware of how this works, but I'll show you real quick. So you see how I start off. You see where my forearms are on that bolster. It really helps if, it, if there's nothing beneath you and you're on a wooden floor. Ah, so I just roll so that my low back is supported, the chest is lifted, we'll be there a little bit. Then you'll hear me say, push that bolster out of your lower back and be there a little bit. Okay. Come on into the first stage. The bolster should work in such a way that it catches those thick back ribs, creating length in your side rib and the lift of the chest that happens from beneath the collarbones. Shoulder blades away from the ears. Breathe into the side body so that the abdomen is deep, passive. Soften the face, the mouth, the jaw, the tongue. Now go ahead and put your hands against that bolster. Push the bolster towards the chair. It may have to tilt a little bit to allow your hips to come all the way onto the ground. We'll let the back come to the ground now. Breathe into the width of the back against the ground. And gently bend the knees, reach the right arm overhead, and turn yourself here onto the right side. And use the hands to press the floor away. Come on up. 
And that's all for this morning. Namaskar, everyone.